Speaking of court cases, speaking of shareholder angst and sort of bad taste in the mouth proverbially, as a shareholder activist, Stephen, notably, from where you sit, give me a sense of what BHP shareholders and Rio shareholders would be thinking about this now. Well, I own two shares in Rio Tinto and I'll be voting in favour. I actually uh, think it's a pretty good deal. They've paid a pretty good price. And in a debt-constrained world, there were, world, there were serious risks that Rio shares could have gone down to 10 or 15 bucks because they're sinking under a mountain of $65 billion Aussie in debt. So I think the Chinese are paying a pretty big price. Um, in governance terms, uh, two out of 17 board seats is not unreasonable. I think it's good that they've released the full 600-page merger agreement this morning. I've never before seen a takeover where the actual legal contract has been released. And uh, I think uh, the British shareholders will be a bit annoyed because, you know, I'll sell it to China, it's no good. But at the end of the day, it means that China will channel much of its investment into Australian assets through Rio. And I think the federal government should use this opportunity to negotiate the removal of the Rio headquarters from London and the relocation of the company down to Australia because at the end of the day Rio is 50% Australian, oh, yet it's currently this. only 14% Australian owned. It's run by the Poms. Stephen, we did this and it's just reminiscent of the CRA takeover. When we first lost CRA to RTZ, we had this argument about headquarters. Does it really matter where the headquarters are when it's quite clear the Chinese are going to have a huge influence on it? Why not just say it's going to end up in Beijing and be done with it? This is all just dressing around the edges. Where are the we going to be in, in negotiations? As someone said, Chinese walls do not exist in China. How are well, they going the, to negotiate this, iron ore right, prices? Yeah, Australia needs to have a, an important partnership with China going into the future. They have massive infrastructure needs, we have the resources, and it would be great and appropriate to have two great international mining houses run out of Australia, BHP and Rio, in partnership with China in this time zone. I just think it but reflects the reality of the possible, new world. Stephen. Partnership is not possible because, as you know, they can drive a wedge now, Rio um, Chinalco, between any price negotiations with Vale, with BHP. Now, how is that negotiation? Well, I think that's an important, important point to make here is they've bought 15% of Hammersley. Hammersley's only about sort of 60% of Rio's iron ore, and the Chinese need 50% of all world iron ore. So they are going to need to still negotiate with Vale and BHP. But I think one very interesting point, which will become a key issue, is that the Chinese now will, will stop pursuing new companies like Jindalbi and Cape Lambert and all these other minor players they've been backing with, you know, promises of free loans. There's about $10 billion of new projects they've promised to bankroll. And I think a lot of that now will be scrapped because they will channel their growth and their effort and their money into Rio because they will feel they have an ownership stake in it. And I'm, I'm not surprised BHP is screaming because BHP tried to really rip off the Chinese. They wanted to buy Rio, create a giant cartel and then just gouge them even further. And I think in some senses that BHP brought this on themselves and they deserve it and uh, Rio right. will benefit Greg, from the partnership with Greg, China. Greg, Stephen, do you have two shares in Fortescue as well? Uh, probably four or five in uh, Fortescue and, and Fortescue uh, won't be a winner from this. No, and yeah, well that's my point. I mean there's going to be a few losers uh, outside of the, the BHP Rio dichotomy as you're suggesting, aren't there? I mean, do you think that Australian shareholders in general will agree with your opinion on the matter or do you think there's going to be a bit of un-Australianness being bandied around? Well, I, I don't know why Australians are going to get mad about selling off our farm when Australian ownership of Rio Tinto is currently 14%. It's run by an American in London with two Aussies on the board. Yeah. So I think if, they, if the government said, get rid of the DLC, get rid of the London listing, bring the company back here, base it here, you would then see index buying and Australian super funds would rise to 25 30%. Get a few more Australians on the board, turn it into a great Australian company with a big Chinese partnership with uh, Chinalco with 18%, and I think you've got a good, good relationship Stephen, going Stephen, in the I also future. Want get, I want to get to grips with, practically speaking, can BHP afford now to go over the top of this Chinalco bed and outbid? BHP have got three options here. The first is to do backroom lobbying of the federal government, which they're already doing, to try and get the government to block it. I don't think that will happen. The second is to make some big blockbuster offers for 100% 
of the individual assets that the Chinese are buying minority stakes in. So come along and say, we'll buy all of Escondido or we'll buy all of Hammersley. Mm. And the third option they've got is to buy a blocking stake, maybe uh, obviously up to 20%. Uh, Chinalco, I don't think, will be able to vote their 9% stake and, uh, and then round up particularly the POMI shareholders and say, this is a shocking deal, uh, doom and gloom, China Inc. and uh, vote it down. And I suspect that uh, they will look very closely at that latter option if they don't get to cherry pick a couple of choice assets out of this deal uh, in, in a sort of a counter proposal they'll make in the next few weeks.